What's going on YouTube? Well, we got some cars to look at again and got some new mainline stuff. Uh found an A case at GameStop of uh new Hot Wheels. So I got the Subaru 22B. Plus we got some mainline matchbox that are new as well. And I found some green lights. So let's take a look. Let's start off some mainline stuff. Everybody's been looking for this bad boy. This is a really cool casting, a little bit larger than 164 scale, but it's really, really pretty accurate in terms of um, this specific version of the Impreza Coupe. This is a 9822B STI, a uh, very, very um, limited production car. This was to commemorate uh, a, a few things, third champion title of WRC, also the 40th anniversary of Subaru, so a lot of cool things going on in 98. Um, this is a great car. It goes back to the 90s, the earlier 90s when this um, body of Impreza came out and they did a really great job replicating this car. This car had specific fenders, uh, wide end fenders, front and rear, had a uh, adjustable spoiler. The 2 liter motor uh, was punched out to 2.2 liters, had an IHI turbo on it. Um, this car is doing about 270, 280 horsepower advertised in about 260 270 torque on this car stick shift manual and, and it had a um, specific hood too with the intercooler scoop on the top venting uh, this is a really cool great job by hot wheels because it's full deco so the headlights are great let's take a zoom and we got the uh, subaru logo on the grill Signal details are done. It's got the regular mainline wheels, which I'll probably swap. I got a couple of these castings now, so you can probably customize this slightly. And then you got your rear deck detail with tail lights, signal bulbs all done too. So really awesome casting. Uh, found it. Came here in the Midwest fairly quickly. I thought it was going to be a little bit of time before. Um, it came to me, but I was able to find it. GameStop had their little days of uh, Hot Wheels, so good stuff. And it definitely looks good with the other Subaru castings that uh, have been released. So very excited for that. And also, I'll put in a uh, another Hot Wheels real quick before I get to my Matchbox. I did find the WRX wagon. So now we got quite the little group. Probably a lot of people have had this. This has been a mainline. I mean, now it's a premium. It's still one of the off road sets I haven't had yet. So cool, cool car. Much more horsepower, of course, than the one that uh, the 98 car, but it's a little bit smaller than the other one, too, in terms of the size. If you look at these two. Of course the hatch would have been larger than the coupe and you can see it's a little bit smaller but all done in that subaru blue so very happy to have that it's going to look good in the subaru area of my collection all right another main line um that i found noteworthy um this is the svx casting so this is another brand new casting i believe they're doing this as a 2020 release um, cases for Matchbox. Looks really cool. It's got pearl white finish. Uh, this is the same one that was released early for the customizers for the Matchbox gathering. That contest. Um, got the SVX licensed on the back. Taillights wrapped around, which I thought was really great. And they also did the signal on the side there. Pearl white. They have the small windows on this car that go down in real life. They only take a section of the door. Um, they tinted the, the roof and everything because it would have had a black tinted top. But this is really clear glass here. And uh, only that small part was uh, operational. The rest was all fixed glass. It was always interesting about that car. Hatchback. And also the SVX uh, noteworthy too. Uh, flat. Uh, six cylinder engine so it was a flat six not a four they're h6 so very cool car glad to have it in the subaru area 
even have the little truck too. So they're starting to get very Subaru uh, in the die cast world. Kudos to Mattel for doing me some good castings here. All right, next, awesome. Truck lover, of course, I love trucks. Gonna look at this bad boy. W200 crew cab, four wheel drive truck. W on the Dodgers like K for General Motors, it denoted four wheel drive. Uh, D was their two wheel drive. And this is, I got the big off-road tires on it. Flat finished paint. It's like an olive green. And it has, these are called the Swept Line Series because of that rear detail there. This is a 67, they're calling it. No, no, 68, sorry. 68 body. Um, Swept Line Series went back into the 60s and uh, went to the early 70s before they switched the, the body that would continue on all the way to 92. Um, but there it is. They have some gr gr uh, grill detail on this, but it's not very sharp. But the paint is very cool. And they got all the details on the truck done very nicely. It's just that uh, it's a very small scale. It's probably between the 180s and 170s on the scale uh, compared to 164th. Too bad. Uh, hopefully one of the uh, premium die-cast makers makes one of these trucks um, in a crew cab. I know green light's doing the swept, swept line trucks in short and long bed regular, but it'd be good to see a crew cab. I bet that'll be probably be the next after the dualies. They'll do crew cabs like this soon. The old vintage ones. Here's your base. So new casting. Uh, it's got a 2018 copyright, so it's been in development for a little bit. Great truck, great, great truck. Okay, um, before we move on, I just want to say I added this uh, loose one to my collection, Snoopy. <laughs> this was part of the A case, and I have a bunch of the older releases in uh, carded, but uh, finally got a new one to take out. So if you haven't seen this out of the package, it's awesome. I do have a hound. Um, uh, personally, my dog is a hound dog, so even though it's a beagle. Well, it's just awesome to have. So, Snoopy is here in the collection loose, finally. All right, so, green light. I'm going to look at what some green light cars. Uh, went to the hardware store and, uh, you know, usually don't expect to find green light at the hardware. But um, they had these four packs that have been released for about a year or two. They had a few others, like the, I think it was a Michelin or a BF Goodrich set, and they also had uh, one other one, like a hiking set or something. Well, I got the Aspen one because of the vehicles included. Um, I really, really liked the way that 72 Ford F100 looked, and the Ski Country Special, that was kind of a cool car as well, so. But then when I took all the cars out, they were pretty cool. So, the other thing about it, it was ten dollars for the box of cars, and that equates to about two and a half dollars, two fifty per car. When most green lights are about six to seven, five to seven bucks. So these are pretty good, and then of course they're all exclusive to the set. So this color scheme and the accessories on these vehicles are exclusive to the set. Bumper keeps falling off. I gotta. Uh, fix that but this is how it comes white walls this is a 67 f100 four-wheel drive truck it's got the lift on it opening hood looks like it's got a big block in there let's take a look but who knows very vague but what's cool about this casting is uh, not every time this has been released they'll have the mirrors usually it's only on special releases so these mirrors are on this one, so I thought that was great. And also, um, the two-tone with that with that yellow, that really pale yellow. I like that a lot. Uh, it started to reverse the tires because you could see that. Look, look, <laughs> look at that white wall. That is quite the job right there. Um, so, probably going to do a wheel swap on this and correct the flashing that was left on the lift kit it makes the truck go over to the side a little bit 
Uh, so, this tires are a little skinny, but uh, it's a cool truck nonetheless. Oh, wait, is this 68? What are they calling this? No, 72, sorry. This is 72, so really the last year for this body style it went to 73. And they started looking like that. But, uh, yeah, so another cool way. Even though it has the full wheel covers, I'll probably use a different wheel on that. So there is our Ford Colorado plates because this is an Aspen ski set. I love it. All right, so once I tune that truck up, it's going to look great. Then we have a 67 Mustang. I think I got that right this time. 67 Mustang Ski Country Special. This was a car that did have this package uh, through Ford. I think it was a regional package. Uh, Mountain States might have had this or Colorado um, for their market, but I, I don't know if it was the whole North America or just in the certain markets. A lot of times manufacturers would do certain areas of the country have their own package. Like, for instance, uh, recently Silverado had a Texas edition, which was really only sold in Texas, uh, pretty much. They might have dealer traded them to other local dealers, but basically they were produced down there for that market so this is something similar i believe um this is like a loaded out gt but this car could have came with a six i can't remember when I, mean, I read up on this it was been a while ago uh, but this was a package it came with the rack and uh, some other things a lot of them would have the vinyl roof and the deluxe gt wheels would have those as well uh, 67 was a redesign year for Mustang as well because the 66 kind of was the body that went back to 64 and this was a new front end and rear deck and all that uh, sheet metal is pretty much new on this car for this year and this is kind of the look that carried into 68 69 uh, before they changed it uh, after 70 uh, the 71 car was a big departure but uh, yeah this is what it came in a fastback convertible and this sedan type uh, coupe body as well. Uh, but uh, Ski Country, I think it was only this. I don't know if they had the uh, fastback. I think it was just this bucket seat car and usual eight cylinder, probably small block. Uh, I think that by 67, you could get a 390 in the Mustang. Um, but uh, a lot of them are 289s and six-cylinder cars for the most part. Uh, majority of Mustangs were. So there we go. All right, so Ski Country Special, a little cool Ford history. Um, and we got three, two, one on the Ford versus Chrysler because there's only one Jeep. Uh, and this is it. Um interesting package on this Wrangler all purple blacked out wheels and it has the tile graphics let's take a look at those it's kind of striking it does have Wrangler on the bottom there uh, removable roof and we'll get off of that in a second it's got the big green light tires and then the tile design wraps around to the other back of this vehicle there so it's kind of a cool setup also we got 2017 uh, licensing there and this one doesn't have the painted headlights it's got the clear headlights right there separate plastic bumper so I think they were do accessories and different bumpers on this let's take a look at the roof so pretty good detail in there a um, little bit of a error prying the roll cage to the truck because they glued it, it was a little crooked. Steering wheel. So, good detail. It's all black in there. It does have the side mirrors. And, uh, got a top right there. So, very thick tires. The other thing I'll notice is you can see how thin that third brake light is. Very, very nice detail. Very thin. Very, very much like the, the real vehicle. Next, we got Aspen Police. Great truck. You can see right here that it's got all the topographical graphics. So, very, very interesting. So, my first um, casting I've purchased that was. Uh, 
the FIPU, Ford Police Interceptor Utility, or FPUI, whatever it is, whatever. Because <laughs> they also name it, they don't call the car the Taurus, they have it the sedan, Police Interceptor Sedan, so this is the Police Interceptor Utility. And they don't call it Explorer. This is the updated body before they change it to 2020. It does have a plastic base. It's got the amber traffic advisor on the rear. And then you can see it's kind of clear. It kind of shows through, so it kind of makes the front look a little funny. But that's really the lighting pattern, the way it's supposed to look on the light bar. Uh, no spotlights, uh, but they do mask out the windshield. Give it that black, so that looks good. You got the push bar in the front. And you have um, black wheels. They're kind of not exactly the way the steel wheel looks. But the, uh, the new 2020 Ford Explorer that they're doing, uh, police interceptor utility that they're doing for 2020, that's going to have the correct wheels. So easy swap if you get multiples. So really cool uh, police vehicle for my collection as well. Very excited for that. All right, and the last vehicle we're going to look at I think is a stunner. Um, it's going to be another blue collar truck. And this is going to be edition six, series six. And I finally found it, M1009 K5. Now it's calling in 1988, uh, but my research showed that they produced them through 86, 87. So I don't know if it was an error, or they had different um, research there that they were able to call this in 1988. but. I suppose they went through 83 to 87 is when General Motors was actually producing these. And uh, they said they made about 70,000 of all the variants, including the K5, the uh, one and a quarter ton, um, eight foot bed regular cab trucks. And also they have chassis cabs and dual reel wheel trucks as well for the military. So these were CUCVs, uh, cuck Vs as they called them. Um, commercial utility cargo vehicle. This was off the shelf vehicles, military purchased, um, set up for their needs, but it was basically based on commercially available parts. This was not spec. These trucks weren't on the front lines. They weren't, you know, uh, getting fired upon <laughs> typically. So they could use production glass and doors and all that. And these were behind the lines, uh, doing all the logistics, moving uh, supplies and troops around, military personnel, uh, all that kind of stuff, um, keeping the bases maintained, maybe patrolling the base, security, all sorts of things. Military, uh, they had uh, ambulances uh, made. They also had communications um, vehicles made from these. So really, really interesting, very wide range of uses. But this was their Blazer, and you could never buy one uh, civilian side, a three-quarter ton, but they made the... M1009, a three-quarter ton truck. They put uh, 10 bolt Chevy corporate axles on either side. I uh, believe it was an open differential in the front, but the rear got uh, Eaton track lock. Um, so it had a locking uh, uh, differential in the rear. Um, chain driven transfer case. Uh, these were limited supposedly to 55 miles an hour. They all had the General Motors Detroit diesel V8s in them, the 6.2. So, yeah, about 240 torque on it. Uh, wasn't a lot. 155 horse. They said that they weren't much more horsepower, even though they were non emission uh, diesels for the military versus the civilian ones. They weren't that much, about five more horse. This has the black grill, although all of them I've seen. The grill was painted the same colors, what the color scheme of the truck was, and that could have been a desert tan. It could have been Arctic operations. It could be the green like this. It could have had the camo green. Just depend on where they were serving. Also, uh, different branches would use them. So the Air Force and uh, Marine Corps, Navy, they all would have their specific color schemes. Metal base unpainted, you know, unlike the k5 blazer the 81 that we've seen through the x-files version it's not tinted glass either it's got a really really amazing um, trailer hitch so they paid attention to doing the m1009 specific bumpers with the hitch and also the tow hooks they're not drilled through but they're there and they also have that special 
plate that they put by the license plate. It is a receiver hitch. As you can see, it's very low to the ground because, unfortunately, the only downfall of this casting, just like the other Blazer we've seen, was the ride height is a little too low. And the tires are a little bit too um, street biased. They'd probably have a little more tread to them in real life. But the hitch was great. It comes apart. So this little pin just goes in there just like a real receiver hitch. I'd say once I lift this truck, this will look a little bit better. Although, some of the pictures I've seen, it didn't have this type of hitch. It had one that was received up here. The receiver is up higher, so. But it's still really cool. And I love how it just snaps in. You just put it in there like that and it sticks in. Black wheels. Again, that probably would have been colored body color. So, very excited to play with this truck and uh, get a few more. This was an acquisition at the diecast show. There was a green light guy there. Had all the green lights. Black interior, uh, although all the floor pans and everything would have been painted body color because I don't think they did carpet or rubber mat on this. It was just all metal. Uh, from the ones I've seen, um, it would have not had black vinyl. It would have had the dark, dark tan um, vinyl seat covers and all that. So that's a little bit different in there too. But that's easily changed. You can see how cool the front grill is done as well. It's just a great truck. The other thing I noticed that was interesting was they used the glass from a pickup truck. Not the K5. And I thought, well, was my sheriff truck like that? And it was not. So I don't know if that's an error. And I'm actually taking this one apart for custom. But that's for later. But uh, yeah, they have the back glass there, a sliding back rear window uh, in this one. So I don't know if mine's an error or if it's uh, just they're all done like that. So there she is, Blazer um, or M1000i CUCV. So there's our cars for today. Uh, we got some more things coming. Got some more stuff coming uh, coming out in the future, so very excited. Um, but yeah, we looked at some great little castings today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. More to come. Till next time.